Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about how to measure heat, how it used to be measured, how it is measured right now. Well, um, this lecture is part of the course Physics 14th, uh, which is presented on unizor.com. Um, and uh, on the same website, you can find the prerequisite to this course, which is Mass 14th. Um, mass is very important for physics, as you know, especially something like calculus, vector, algebra. Um, now, if you found this lecture somewhere else on some other website instead of unizor.com, let's say on YouTube, for instance, well, I do suggest you to use unizor.com instead. First of all, because on unizor it's a course, not just one particular lecture about one particular topic. So it's a course which is obviously logically dependent upon itself. The lectures are ordered in the proper order, etc. Uh, now, every lecture has also a textual explanation on this website on Unizor. Um, and also there are exams for those people who would like to challenge themselves. Um, so it's, it's much more beneficial for you to, to study using the website unizor.com rather than any kind of other website where just the lecture basically or only the video presentation actually um, is, is, is present. And by the way the website is completely free, there are no advertisement, you don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. Um, for those who do sign in there is a possibility of actually studying under a supervision of a teacher or a parent. So. But anyway, that's not necessary, no financial strings attached at all. All right, so we'll talk about heat. Well, you see, people did know about the heat significantly earlier than they realized something about molecular uh, movement theory, kinetics uh, of molecules. So the heat is actually related to mechanical movement of the molecules inside um, the body. So, since they didn't really know about anything about kinetic energy of the molecules, they approached heat completely differently as a, a special uh, kind of an entity, physical entity, and they wanted to measure it. So, um, how to measure the heat? Well, they have actually discovered experimentally that if you take one gram of water and you would like to increase its temperature uh, from, let's say, 20 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. Um, certain amount of heat actually will basically be consumed by this gram of water. So they have decided to use this uh, as a unit of heat. So amount of heat which is needed to heat by one, gradus, one degree um, a one gram of water was basically um, set as a as a unit of uh, heat measurement. <coughs> well, obviously, when the water actually cools down from let's say thirty degrees Celsius to twenty nine, it releases certain amount of heat, which is exactly the same. Now, it was not easy to establish the fact that amount of heat necessary to increase the um, water temperature from, from 20 to 21 uh, degrees is the same as, let's say, from 50 to 51, or at least approximately the same. So basically all these efforts were directed towards um, explaining really to themselves that these are that there are certain laws actually, uh, and, and and the heat can be actually measured using this unit um, of heat, which is amount of uh, heat necessary to heat up the water by by one degree Celsius. Okay, so they have established this, um, obviously not without flaws because um, they probably didn't realize it in the very beginning, at least that uh, the amount of heat to heat the water by one degree actually depends on many different factors. Well, for instance, the purity of, chemical purity of water. It also depends on the place on Earth where exactly you measure this and on height above the Earth. So there are certain flaws in this, but to the extent of uh, 
precision uh, accepted at that particular time, it was fine. So they have established one unit of heat, which is called one calorie, and the calorie is amount of heat needed to heat up the water by one degree Celsius. Okay, so that's basically a um, definition of a calorie. Now, obviously, there is a, uh, another unit which is also kind of used, kilocalorie, which is 1000 calories. So we have one calorie equals to amount of heat needed by one gram of water plus one degree uh, Celsius. Now one kilocalorie is obviously 1000 calories. So that was established, as I was saying, long before kinetic uh, theory of uh, molecular movement was um, applied to, to the heat. Now, then the science developed into understanding that the heat is actually a molecular movement. It's an intensity of the molecular movement, that the temperature is actually um, average kinetic energy of the of the molecules. Um, so, uh, mechanical energy is measured in uh, our standard system in joules, right? Joules, which is one joule is actually one newton times one meter, right? where Newton is kilogram meter to second square, right? This is the force, which is, according to second uh, law of Newton, is mass times acceleration. Now, this is the distance this force is actually acting. So that's how you derive one joule. All right, so we have this one joule as the unit of energy um, mechanical energy in this particular case, which um, which is actually an essence of heat. Heat is mechanical energy of the molecule. So, it was necessary to establish certain equivalence between the historical measurement of the heat in calories and something which we basically know as as the unit of mechanical energy in uh, in the in the system of measurement called. Sistema Internacional. So, how can we establish the correspondence? How do we know that certain amount of energy uh, which we can actually supply to um, the molecules, uh, let's say water of some, some other uh, objects, that it's actually converted into certain amount of heat measured in calories. And here is a very clever experiment. Let's imagine that you have a reservoir of water standing on the ground of the earth. Now, what if, let's say the mass of the water is M, capital M. Now, now I have a small stone which is on the surface of this. I'm just holding it right on the level of the surface of this water. Now, this stone, according to regular mechanics, um, has potential energy because it's above the level of the Earth, right? So, if this is H, then M times G times H is potential energy of this stone. Now, let's let it go so the stone goes down. Here is our stone. Now, what we used to have is no kinetic energy. The stone was basically standing still and potential energy. Now, when it's on the bottom of this reservoir, it has, again, no kinetic energy and no potential energy because it's on the level of the ground. Right? So, where is the energy going? Obviously, 
this potential energy was converted into kinetic energy of the stone itself, uh, which means it moves basically, right? Since it's moving down, it's falling down within the water, it, uh, uh, it, it has its own kinetic energy. But then at the very end, there is no kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy, this potential is converting uh, into, uh, as the stone is falling down, is actually transferred into kinetic energy of the molecules of the water, right? Because it should, it should push these molecules around while it's falling down. And at the very end, basically all the kinetic energy which it possessed, which is basically a result of the potential energy it had in the very beginning, is distributed among molecules of the water. And since the water molecules started moving, it means that the temperature must have been increased, right? So, we have certain increase of the temperature, delta T, of this water after the stone comes down. And we can measure it. T means it's temperature, right? Temperature can be measured in degrees of Celsius or anything else. So, the water has increased the temperature and the amount of heat, which is actually amount of kinetic energy of the molecules, which is supposed to be equal to the original potential energy, they are supposed to be equal. So this is the same as mass of the water times uh, incre increment of the temperature. Now, but this is in joules, and this is in calories, right? Because one gram times one degree is one calorie. So, when we have total amount of water, let's say in grams in this case, and the difference in the temperature um, in, in degrees of uh, Celsius, if we multiply, we get the calories. Now, now if the same uh, we will have here, this is uh, kilograms, this is uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, this is meters, so this is joules. So that's how, by comparing this, I mean, I put this equal sign, but it's not really equal sign because it's different um, uh, units of measurement. So, uh, it, it's supposed to be basically the basis for conversion. So, it should be some kind of coefficient here. Coefficient which converts calorie into joules or joules into calories. Now, by making this experiment, measuring lowercase m, which is mass of the stone, g we know, h we again measure, m mass of uh, um, water in, in grams and delta t in degrees of uh, Celsius. Measuring this and this, we can establish what is the ratio factor which we, which, which we have to multiply this to get this or this to get that. And finally, it was actually established that one calorie It's equal to 4.184 joules. One calorie is 4.184 joules. Well, obviously, this is, I would say, a little bit approximate, a, a, a little approximation because as I was saying before, it's very difficult to make this experiment clean. It all depends on many different factors, like chemical composition of the water, purity of the water, place on Earth where we, where we, we conduct the experiment, because the G actually depends uh, on, on this. So, um, within certain precision, let's put it this way, reasonable precision, you can basically assume that for whatever the calculations, historical unit of measurement of the heat, which is calorie, 
is related to scientific measurement of the energy by this particular equation. Just slightly more than 4 joules comes into 1 calorie. Okay, so, now, traditionally, um, certain heat is still measured in calories. For instance, um, the amount of energy in food, which is somehow converted by our, um, uh, by, by, by our body into energy, is measured, and by the way, I have no idea how they measured it, but anyway, they measured a certain amount of energy in, in, in every food. Um, it's traditionally measured in uh, kilocalories, which is 1,000 calories. However, they call it large calories. So, kilocalories, sometimes it's called large calories, and plain calories is called small calories. So basically, when they're talking about energy in food, they're measuring it in, in kilocalories or large calories. And um, in practical life, they just skip the large. So they're saying it's calorie, but it's not really this calorie, it's really a kilocalorie, it's a large calorie. This is misunderstanding, but whatever it is, it is. That, that's kind of a traditional thing. So when they're saying that this particular uh, sandwich contains this particular n number of calories, it actually means kilocalories and every kilocalorie, uh, which is 1000 calories, contains 4184 joules. Um, so that's kind of a, um, I would say, misunderstanding. Now, um, since the word since the word calorie is always related to water which is heated by one uh, one gram of water uh, heated by one by one degree of celsius or kelvin doesn't really matter right because the unit's exactly the same the size of the unit um it's not as scientific as people would prefer so for purely scientific reasons what physics have decided to do is they cannot really use the word calorie by itself because again it's related to water etc etc so they have uh, a unit which is called thermocalorie thermocalorie it's just a new word which is supposed to replace the word calorie just because this is a scientific definition and this is a very experiment dependent definition and this by definition is equal to 4.1833 joules so basically they have established a new unit of measurement which is equal to 4.1833 joules and call it a thermocalorie which is approximately equals to a calorie but the calorie is kind of uh, a little bit different under different conditions so they have decided okay this is a scientific uh, unit and if anybody wants to measure anything scientifically in calories this is how it's supposed to be done you don't have to remember it obviously but uh, again you understand the difference between purely scientific definition which is this without any kind of experiments no water reservoir nothing like this just by definition established one thermocalorie is equal to this end of story and the calorie which is kind of experiment dependent and approximately its value is somewhere around this but again under different conditions it can be a little bit more a little bit less than 4.184 in this case it's just a little bit less basically that's it that's how the heat is being measured Again, historically, in calories and kilocalories, large calories, small calories, large is emitted. Uh, and scientifically, it's basically in joules, or if you really want to go into the calories, this is the coefficient of transformation. Um, I do suggest you to read the textual uh, part of this lecture on physics uh, 14s. You just go to energy, uh, the heat, uh, and uh, heat measurement uh, subchapter. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.